So good morning, everyone. Um, I think there's there's still some for yet to join, but we will begin the class. Uh, so last class we learned about contract. We learned about um, the definition of a contract. We learned about what is an agreement, and um, we also learned that. Um, an agreement that is enforceable in law is a contract. Before that, we learned about what are the elements in a contract. We said it has to have an offer. It has to have an acceptance. That is an offer must be accepted to be made an agreement or to, be, to constitute an agreement. There has to be an offer and acceptance of that offer to constitute an agreement. Now, for that agreement to be considered as legally valid, valid and to to you know to be concretized into a contract so we said we need legal enforceability now legal enforceability factors also constitute as elements of contract that is uh you know there is something called as consideration which we'll be doing today and then we spoke about you know there has to be intention of the parties uh, you know legal intention of the parties for example you know contract to sell drugs is not a valid contract, for example. So the intention of the party should be legal in nature. So, uh, or it should be for a legal purpose. So illegal purposes cannot be enforced in law. See, for example, there is an offer to sell drugs. There is acceptance to sell drugs. And then there is a consideration as well. They give something in return. There is some payment and both the parties are, you know, uh, they have the capacity to contract, they are normal in mind, they are, uh, you know, both are, um, you know, uh, they have, uh, the, uh, they have attained the age of majority, whatever, so all the constituent factors are there, but uh, the purpose of uh, the contract is to sell drugs, so anything that is illegal in nature, and the purpose, if it is illegal in nature, it cannot be considered to be a valid contract. So this is just to set the perspective. So therefore, again, I'm reiterating, repeating as a revision for you, we learned about agreements that would become a contract. And for an agreement to be considered as an agreement, we said there should be offer plus acceptance is an agreement. We learned about the essentials of a valid offer. Then we learned about some case laws. We learned about essential um, you know, factors or elements uh, in acceptance. And now we are going towards the third element in the contract, that is um, the legal enforceability part of it. And for a contract to be considered legally enforceable, it has to have one consideration. Of course, it has, the, the party should, be, uh, should have the capacity to contract, which we'll be doing later on. And then there should, should be legal intention, which I've already kind of explained to you, but then again, we'll do it in detail later on. For, to, for today's class, we are going to learn about consideration and we are going to see the concept of consideration in the international perspective because as you know uh, laws vary from one jurisdiction to another we all know that now the laws of contract are similar everywhere however there are certain concepts which are you know different and it is differently interpreted and you know differently used for example, is a concept of consideration. What is a valid consideration? When it would be considered as a valid consideration and so on. So there are certain factors that differentiate um, with respect to the interpretation and implementation in different jurisdictions or, or in different parts of the world. Let's move on to our slides. So what is this consideration? Now, just going by the slide itself, 
In the last chapter, we learned that an agreement that is legally enforceable is a contract, as we just discussed some time back. Not every agreement can be regarded as a binding contract. That's what we said last class. All agreements cannot be called as contracts, but all contracts may be agreements. I'm repeating, or rather I put it this way, all contracts are agreements, but not all agreements are contracts. So this kind of question can come to you even for exams. I'm repeating again, all agreements are contracts, but not, sorry, all, uh, all contracts are agreements, but not all agreements are contract. Now, what is the answer for this? Can someone tell me? All agreements cannot be called as contracts. Yes, it's clear. Yeah. This means uh, ag agreement is more than a contract. There are many other agreements, like political, economical, but uh, contract is, is a, a smaller set. This means it's a subset of agreement. So contracts can be agreements, but agreements cannot, cannot agree. All agreements are not contracts. This means not ever, not ever agreement is contract, and that's true. Okay. Um, uh, now listen carefully, okay? Thanks, uh, Kasim. Okay, now listen carefully. Uh, does someone else want to uh, uh, say something? Do you want to comment on this? Yes, or, teacher. I want to yes, ask, please. Yeah. yeah, I want to add a contract, <laughs> enforceable by the law. <laughs> contract is enforceable by the law. There is a legal intention to be in, in letter in uh, contract, but agreement is to be in only ex in offer plus acceptance. There is offer plus acceptance. There is no in greeting and enforceable by the law. So okay. that's the difference. Yes, Naima. Thank you so much. I'm glad today you spoke. Okay. Um, Okay, now listen, everybody. Uh, that's the reason I uh, was teaching you, uh, you know, in the basic form uh, initially. Listen to me carefully. I'm repeating, okay, Kasim and everyone. Again, let me revise it before going to the concept of consideration. We all know, I'm going from the basic, okay? Though we know everything, but still sometimes it might, you know, skip our attention and we may not be able to articulate it. So I'm just repeating. We all know that every day, knowingly or unknowingly, we go through agreements and contracts. For example, even when we board a public transport system, say like a bus or a taxi, you are entering into a kind of a contract. When you are, uh, sorry, there's some construction going on in the side. Uh, I cannot stop it. It's a release by the building sound. Um, so, okay. So then I was talking about like, even if you go to a shop, okay, you go to purchase some goods, it is a kind of an agreement and a contract that you are entering to, into, you're entering into. Now, what is an agreement? Listen carefully. I agree with you, okay, to give my services to you as a teacher. I agree with you. So, um, there is an offer. Say now, you are giving me an offer. Would you teach me? I am accepting that offer. The offer plus acceptance is an agreement, okay? Offer plus agree, uh, acceptance is an agreement. Now, to this agreement, suppose now, for example, uh, I, 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 I tell you, yes, uh, you know, Naima or Asha or Kasim, Issei, 
uh, Abdul Rahman, I say, yes, I'm going to meet you every Tuesday at uh, 8 a.m. And even without informing you, I'm not available for one Tuesday. So probably you might think, okay, maybe she's sick. Something has happened that she's not involved. Okay, forget it. So again, it happens the next Tuesday, again, the third Tuesday. And now you are uh, like, you know, your, uh, uh, this, uh, you know, the study program is jeopardized and your exams are nearing and you lost. So now can you file a case against me? Listen carefully, I'm gonna answer it. Now the answer to this is not really because there is no legal enforceability to this because you gave me an offer i accepted but there is no legal enforceability to a contract however listen carefully if you prove the job uh, the, the factor of jeopardy and that you are and then there is an offer and acceptance there is a possibility you sue me but there are, for it to be considered as a contract legal enforceability is missing so I said that agree, uh, offer plus acceptance is an agreement. I agree. Now, for this agreement to be legally enforceable, it has to take off. Now the flight is on the ground. Offer plus acceptance. Now it has to take off. You know, to take off, you need legal enforceability. Now, what is the role of this factor of taking off? If any of the parties do not perform their part of contract or there is a breach of contract, you can catch the neck of the person and sue the person in the court of law. Of course, there is a valid agreement. Your offer plus acceptance is a valid agreement. There is, a, there is an agreement. It's a smaller part, it's an agreement, no problem. See, normally in the legal world, sometimes we do not always, uh, you know, write uh, when we are drafting something, we do not always say contract, contract. We, we might call it as a purchase agreement, sales agreement, or, uh, you know, uh, you know, just a subcontracting agreement, or, you know, we just give the term agreement. The, the, the word actually offer plus acceptance, and then it has certain terms in that, which makes it a contract. I mean, practically speaking, but for you to know, once you know what is the concept, like whatever is worded, you already know the answer, practically speaking, okay? So an offer plus acceptance is an agreement. Now, for that agreement to be legally binding, there are some other factors that is involved there. So a, an agreement which can be legally enforceable is a contract. Therefore, we say that all contracts may be agreements because offer plus acceptance is there. The ingredients are there. All contracts are agreements. But all agreements are not contracts. Why? Because enforceability part is missing. So therefore, the simplest definition of a contract is an agreement which is enforceable in law is a contract. Offer, when it is accepted, it becomes an agreement. This agreement, when it is legally enforceable or uh, it is capable of being enforced in the court of law or legally, it becomes a contract. So, of course, the broader picture is you'll have to have offer in a contract, you'll have to have acceptance in the contract, you'll have to have legal enforceability in a contract. One, two, three, legal enforceability. So, I am at stage one. One plus two, offer acceptance is an agreement. Now, this agreement, there has to be legal enforceability. Now, for it to be considered to be legally enforceable, some other elements are in a contract consideration. Then capacity to contract, that is uh, the party should not be a minor. There are certain exceptions when a minor's contract may be a contract. There are exceptions to every rule. 
um, then a person should uh, be of a sound mind. An insane person cannot, you know, a person who is not normal in mind, um, <clears throat> sorry, cannot enter into a contract. A child cannot enter into a contract, but again, there are exceptions. And, um, you know, so on. So mental capacity to contract. So this capacity to contract they, and the purpose of the contract, intention of the parties to the contract, these are all elements, the other elements, but they come within the ambit of legal enforceability. So simply speaking, one plus two for offer acceptance is an agreement. Agreement with a legal enforceability factor is a contract. Now, this legal enforceability in brackets, it, uh, how it can be legally enforced, it has to have a consideration, capacity to contract, um, intention of the parties to the contract should be you know, ascertained whether what was the intention in their mind and the purpose, what is the purpose? It should be for a legal purpose and so on. So therefore, all contracts are agreements, but not all agreements are contract. Are you understanding me? Yes. Okay, thank you. So now let's move on to the next element to prove our legal enforceability part of it. That is consideration. Uh, remember the sentence, it can come for your exams. All contracts are agreements, but not all agreements are contracts. Now, not every agreement can be regarded as binding contract. For an agreement to be binding, it must be capable of being legally enforced. The factor of legal enforceability must be established. It must be proved to bind the parties to a contract. Or oh, I put it like this, the factor of legal enforceability must be evidenced to bind the parties to a contract. So legal enforceability can be established by examining the following elements. Of course, there has to be existence of a valid offer in a contract, valid acceptance, that's constituting a valid agreement. Then it should have the element of consideration, purpose of the contract must be legitimate, that means legal, it should be legal in nature. I give you an example like contracting for the sale of drugs, it is illegal, international law, it's domestic laws as well as international, it is illegal to deal with drugs. Then parties to the contract must have capacity to contract as a minor and you know sound mind. Then consent by of the parties must be free. And just no one should uh, you know you should not be forced to sign a contract. They should uh, you know there should be no coercion. We'll study this coercion, duress, misrepresentation shouldn't be there. So consent of the parties must be free. Yes, I am willing to enter into contract, not not by force, coercion intimidation that is somebody threatening you to sign the contract so consent must be free okay we'll study that later on so in this chapter let us study or concentrate on the concept of consideration consideration is a fundamental part of a contract in a in the business world why we are saying it's fundamental? Because it operates on the principle of quid pro quo, Q-U-I-D, quid. You'll see it in the other slides, don't worry. P-R-O, pro, quo, Q-U-O. It's a Latin maxim. That means something in return. If I give you this, you give me something else in return. So quid pro quo. So it revolves around the principle of quid pro quo. So what I said was, it is a fundamental part of a contract to, to be legally enforceable. There has to be a valid consideration that can be proved in the court of law. This consideration should be something in return. For example, you go to the shop, you buy something, and uh, you know you say give me this product and then you pay the price for that price is consideration so in the business world 
we all know that you will have to pay some consideration there has to be a consideration for a contract to be considered as a valid contract that means is charity just when you want to give it for charity or voluntary services is it a valid consideration or um, something that you want to give away free is it valid in nature let's see later on so under common law that is you know the english law uk australia except in certain circumstances for an agreement to be binding the offeree that is to whom you have already offered to do something or promising the other person must provide consideration which must be in the form of payment or of a legally sufficient value promise if you offer to purchase something okay for a consideration the other person promises to deliver the goods to you so he becomes a promise or you say that i will deliver the goods uh, i will purchase the goods to you and i will pay you a consideration so i promise you that i will pay you the price for the goods so i am promising okay i'll pay you the price are you understanding so therefore this is a simple you know a short transaction therefore offeree or the promisee must provide consideration which may be in the form of payment or of a legally sufficient value what is legally sufficient value there are cases where the court said that you give something in return i'm not talking about the barter system but you give something in return it should be of legally sufficient value and that is enough valid consideration we will see later on there are cases so it revolves around the principle of quid pro quo a latin maxim which literally means something for something that means you give something and something you get in return that implies something in return is necessitated so accordingly gratuitous promises are generally not enforceable generally not enforceable gratuitous promises that means you it's like a gift you you give something away just freely so gratuitous promises are generally not enforceable so according to blackstone consideration is a recompense given by the party contracting to the other so this is the definition so the question comes to you explain the concept of consideration or define consideration or past consideration is no consideration always every answer should begin with the definition what is that consideration how Uh, what is the value of that consideration? How valid is that consideration? So you'll have to put even the elements of cons valid consideration. So Blackstone, according to Blackstone, consideration is the recompense given by the party contracting to the other. Now the Indian Contract Act now used this definition just to give you you know an overall picture because uh, this definition is a little bit uh, you know in detail. just to understand what is this consideration so the indian contract act under section 2d defines consideration as when the desire of the promiser when at the desire of the promiser the promisee or any other person the one who promises is the promiser the one who is at the other end uh, is the promisee or any other person has done or abstained from doing something does or abstains from doing something or promises to do or to abstain from doing something then such an abstinence or promise can be considered as a consideration from the promise to do something or not to do something abstain is not to do something to do something or not to do something whatever it is that is in support of an agreement to do something in return is a consideration it operates around the principle of quid pro quo so in the english case of curry versus misa the court that there was justice lush there he held that consideration now this also is the definition must consider either in some right interest profit or benefit accruing to the other party or some forbearance detriment loss or responsibility 
given, suffered, or undertaken by the other. So something has to be returned. He said it in, uh, you know, it is at page 162 of the judgment. Thus, there can be no legal contract unless there is a consideration in the form of a benefit gained or detriment suffered arrangement by the parties. Now, in the American case of Anshad versus Simnasha, uh, this is um, uh, this was actually decided by the New York Supreme Court. Here, the Supreme Court observed that is the New York Supreme Court observed that the law is well settled that in order for a promise to be enforceable as a contract, the promise must be supported by a valid consideration. Okay. Or offer plus acceptance, offer. It has to be supported by a valid consideration. So the essence of consideration is a legal detriment that has been bargained for in exchange for the promise in that particular case. And in short, the detriment must include the promise. So what they said here, uh, Justice Lush says in the previous case, in Curie's case, he says that it could, you know, consideration could be an interest, profit, benefit accruing to the other, or some forbearance, or even it includes detriment, loss, or responsibility given, suffered, or undertaken by the other. So anything can form a consideration, something in return. You'll understand. Let us go through the other slides. Wow, it got stuck up. So, so this is what was held in the American case. Next, let's move on to next slide. So here, there are certain essential elements of consideration. One consideration can be in the form of payment or something of legal value. In Chapel versus Nestle, the House of Lords, an English case again, held that chocolate wrappers could be considered as consideration. I'm repeating, chocolate wrappers could be considered as a consideration. So for the purpose of consideration here, The courts are not interested in the adequacy of the consideration, whether the consideration is adequate or inadequate. It is enough or not enough. Are you understanding me? Consideration, for example, somebody uh, decides to uh, sell you a gold jewelry for, uh, you know, how to say it, say $1. You will not get for $1 a gold jewelry. You understand? So the... The adequacy, how much is the cost of it doesn't matter, but there has to be a consideration. A consideration can be even inadequate. So there has to be something in return that is a consideration. That consideration may be in the form of payment or something of legal value. Adequacy is not a question. So all that matters is the promise or the performance provides some benefits to the other party or imposes some detriment on the promising or performing party. 
So Lord Somerville substantiated the concept of consideration and said at page 114 of the judgment, a contracting party can stipulate what consideration he chooses. Now, a peppercorn, I'm sure you know what's pepper, peppercorn, it's a spice. A peppercorn does not cease to be good consideration if it is established that the promisee does not like pepper and will throw away the corn. So it does not matter. So consideration can be anything of value and that which is not illegal. Example, A promises to sell his laptop to B. If B arranges drugs from his friend to be passed to A, now, this is an illegal promise, an illegal consideration. He says, okay, you give me your laptop and uh, for that I will arrange, uh, you know, drugs for my friend. Or A tells to B, I'll give you my laptop. For that, you will have to arrange, uh, you know, drugs from your friend. So laptop is kind of a consideration. I'll give you this, you give me drugs through your friend. So this is an illegal promise, illegal consideration. Now, example two, A promises to sell his laptop for say, to B for $200. Your $200 is a valid consideration. Now, consideration need not be monetarily adequate. Just like I said earlier, someone wants to sell you their gold jewelry just for $1. So the value is not the question here. Adequacy is not a question, but there is something in return. In Thomas versus Thomas, consideration means, the quote said that, Consideration means something which is of some value in the eyes of law. Economic adequacy is not significant. Next is consideration must be as per the demand of the offerer. The offerer says, I'll give you something for this price. Consideration must be provided by the offeree as demanded by the offerer. Now, actually in India, it doesn't matter who furnishes it, but this is English law. Consideration must be provided by the offeree as demanded by the offerer. A promises to sell his horse to be for $90. So he's offering to sell it for $90. He is proposing to sell it for $90. That proposal has to be accepted by B. But he's willing to purchase it for $90. The offering has to accept it. He has to accept to pay the consideration and consideration moves from the offeree to the offerer. It can move even from the promisee to the promiser, depending upon the transaction and what it is. So consideration must be real, not illusory and be capable of being executed. I mean, it should not be imaginary. It should be real. It should not be imaginary. It should not be illusory and it should be capable of being executed. For example, A persuades D to marry him and promises her the moon. It's not possible, it's illusory. So consideration must be real, not illusory. Now, consideration may be categorized as follows. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. So consideration may be categorized as follows. Consideration may be past, present, or future. Consideration may be executory or executed. It's very easy. It's very simple. Okay. Now, what is past consideration? You know what is past means something that is already taken place, something which has already happened, something which is, you know, uh, something that has already happened before. So that is past. Now, past consideration is no consideration. This is English law. I'm repeating. Huh? If you hear me carefully, you will surely understand. Past consideration 